All right, so when we talk about the smile of an arahat, that has, some, that has to do with the experience of the feeling, okay? Uh, we're talking about the feeling. Ma. When you smile, it's a feeling, right? So that is definitely a pleasant feeling. It's, uh, it's a good feeling. So to understand better the teachings of the feeling, right? We should look at, uh, you know, this satipatthana, right? The contemplation of feeling. Uh, have you heard of the term, the word satipatthana? Yamo? Uh, Satipatthana, right? So in the Satipatthana Sutta, so, so there are these four areas of our experience uh, to uh, direct our attention and to recognize for ourselves the true nature of the world we live in. So these are the four areas. Uh, um, they are the Gaya, right? Vedana, Chitta, and Dharma. Gaya Hemi referred to the body, right? Uh, Vedana is a feeling. Chitta and the Dharma. So we shall look at the teachings of the contemplation of the Vedana, the second one, in order, in order to understand better the smile of an Arahat. For example, how this feel, feeling arises, and then how many types of the feeling, and what kind of feelings that we should look for, right? And is there any practice that we can pursue to experience uh, this, what we call it, the transcendental feeling? And how important it is, you know, these types of transcendental feeling for our spiritual cultivation, right? Yeah, so a lot of people misunderstood that uh, as we practice the Zama, we have to show a sour face. Right? So this is not true, yeah? So I think the one who practice that uh, they should smile uh, all the time, uh, uh, not that kind of... Uh, uh, <laughs> <laughs> you know, you know. I mean, whether lay people or the, uh, uh, a monk, right? As we practice, go along the path, right? Um, uh, you know, we should, you know, have that kind of uh, very smiling, uh, uh, you know, the, the approach or smiling face, right? Uh, that kind of joys, you know, in our mind. Huh? So we we will investigate all these things in brief. <clears throat> okay, the rising of feeling, right? First of all. How feeling arises, okay? Feeling is very important, right? So if you look at the twelvefold dependent origination, right? Uh, there is a saying there is, is that says because of the contact, right? Pasa pachaya vedana, vedana pachaya tanha, right? Because of contact as a condition, feeling arises. Right? That is to say, because of uh, uh, the feeling as a condition. Right, craving arises. Okay, so then to say the feeling arises because of contact. So this is one point very important. How feeling arises because of contact? Then, what is what is contact then? <clears throat> he said, how feeling arises? Huh? It is due to one of the mental factors called the passa, called the contact as a condition. Right, and the contact function is to combine the sense faculty okay for example the eyes with the object you know the corresponding object and the consciousness together so these three things so the fun the function of the contact you know is to combine these three you look at the pictures right to combine these three together so contact make the coming together of the three right that are consciousness right and the sense door and the object, okay? So we can say that it is contact is the mental factors, right? What are the mental factors? You know what is the mental factors? When you talk about the mind, they talk about the mental factors, whatever that associated with the mind is called the mental factors. Or sometimes we call it the mental concomitant, right? We have only one mind, but whatever that associated with the mind is called the mental factors, okay? <laughs> you got it right. So this is a very technical term. So in Pali, it's called the cheta sika or the chaita, right? So whenever the mind arises, there are a clusters of the mental factors that associated with the mind arises together with the mind. Huh? So we call it the mental factors. So in this case, the feeling, right, and the contact, huh, they are mental factors. Okay, they are associated with the mind. So. You see, when we talk about, so this is how the feeling arises, okay? Eh, sorry. 
Um, so you see, the sentient beings are investigate are instigated by the feeling, right? So we can say that, uh, and because of the influence of these, uh, what do you call, various types of the feeling, right? Our life become more and more complicated, right? And at the end, we suffer, right? So, and it is also because of the instigation, right, of the feeling, we become the slave of feeling, right? But unfortunately, we still don't know, right, that we are enslaved, right? Uh, there is a word Chinese say, we are the nudi. You know that word? Yeah. Don't understand, huh? Nuti, <laughs> nuti. Yeah, it means that we enslaved, right, to to feeling, right, and because of that, uh, we we directly destroy our feeling because, you know, it, that's why the Buddha says all our problems come because of feeling, you see, because of feeling, right. For example, if we have good feeling arises in us, then we we have a tendency to greed, right. If we have bad feeling, unpleasant feeling, we have a we have tendency to ang to to get angry, something like that. Is it? So it means that we become the the slave, enslaved, uh, you know, uh, what do you call by the feeling, just uh, uh, not knowing it. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, the Buddha says right. We have to, uh, you know. Especially in this, in this, in this, in the present life, right? Uh, the Buddha taught us to live a contented life, right? A very simple life, right? To practice the loving kindness and to cultivate the loving kindness, right? In order to reduce our our greed, right? And how to how to cultivate a better world to live in? But the Buddha says we have to cultivate. There's a types of feeling, right? It's called the transcendental or unworthy. A pleasurable, good feeling, right? In order to create a better world to live. So we are going to look at it. All right. So our life now become more very complicated because, um, because all oh, because of the feeling, right? That's why in the suttas the Buddha says feeling is one of the main, is one of the root of dispute, is one of the trouble maker. It means that for all the defilements created by the the feeling. So we can see that the feeling is the fundamental problems in life. Okay, you understand or not? Huh? It, because of feeling, uh, that give rise to the greed, hatred, and delusion. And this had anger, hatred, and delusion is because of our attachment to the good feeling, bad feeling, and neutral feeling. Neutral feeling lead to the delusion. Okay. So we talk about the raga dosa moha, right? Tan chen si, tan chen si. It's also because of this attachment to the feeling, huh? Pleasurable feeling, unpleasurable feeling, and the neutral feeling. Okay, so okay, we will continue, huh? Continue. <clears throat> so you see, um, so this is one of the mental factors, right? Feeling. Uh, <clears throat> If you look at this, uh, the feeling, right? Uh, this Vedana uh, is derived from the root with mean to know, to experience. Okay, to know, to experience. So the function of uh, feeling, right? Vedana is to experience of object. Okay? And sometimes people also confuse the feeling with the emotion, right? Yeah, people ask, uh, does uh, feeling also include the emotion? You know the emotion. Emotion is a very complex mind, right? Uh, definitely, it's not because feeling is feeling, right? In Buddhism, feeling, right? And emotion is emotion. So emotion uh, is included in the domain of the mind, huh? and this emotion involves a very complex phenomena, right? With different mental states, so we can say that this feeling is a very rudimentary, right? Elements that constitutes to the arising of the emotion, right? So that is to say, uh, because of good feeling, right? If we are not aware, that give rise to the greed. Okay, if there is a bad feeling, 
right? If we are not aware and not mindful, then it gives rise to anger. So anger is a complex emotion. Okay, it's a complex emotion. Okay, whereas feeling is just only feeling. So when we talk about the feeling, either it has three types of feeling, right? You had a good feeling, right? You had a bad feeling, and you have the neutral feeling, right? Feeling is feeling, right? Feeling is different from the emotion, but emotion arises because of the attachment to the feeling. You got it, right? Okay, so you can see their relationship, right? Um, so that's why in the meditation, the Buddha's, uh, you know, taught us, right? A meditation, a meditator, right? Should be trained to be aware of these three types of feeling. Uh, these three types of feeling, uh, you know, a pleasant feeling, right? Unpleasant feeling, and another one is a neutral feeling. Okay, so if you look at this uh, teaching of this uh, Satipatthana, right? In the contemplation of the feeling, right? Um, there is one like contemplation of feeling, right? And the Buddha told us, you know, we should know how this feeling arises, you know, how this feeling caused defilements, and how a contemplation of feeling, um, you know, to be done in order to eradicate defilements. Okay, so feeling is this contemplation of feeling becomes a very important uh, practice in our Buddhism, right? That's why when any of this feeling arises, uh, be it good or bad, we just nod it, right? If good feeling arises, hmm, what's I, what's I? Uh, knowing, knowing, knowing. Uh, if bad feeling arises, what's I, what's I? Uh, knowing, knowing. <laughs> Without mind getting attached to it, you see? If you get attached to it, then we become enslaved, right? By the feeling, isn't it? Uh, we become the slave of the feeling, you see? Uh, but we, we have to be a masters of our feeling, right? So when any of this unpleasant feeling arises, hmm, okay, yeah, no. I acknowledge that unpleasant feeling, knowing, 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 and put a stop to it, okay? Uh, not easy, no? But this is a training, this is a training, huh? This is a training. Okay, we continue, huh? Okay, so when you look at these uh, three types of feeling, right? Uh, pleasant feeling, unpleasant feeling, and neutral feeling, right? And they, the Buddha also said there are these two categories of feeling, uh, discern, right? One is the mundane feeling, right? Another one is a super mundane, right? Mundane, we talk about the very worldly feeling, right? Worldly feeling may contaminated by the greed, hatred, and delusion. Okay, then another one is unworthy feeling. It's without tainted by the greed, hatred, and delusion. Okay, so you see, uh, in this uh, Satipatthana, they said, when feeling a worldly pleasant feeling, he knows I feel a worldly pleasant feeling. Similarly, when feeling an unworthy pleasant feeling, you see, worldly we talk about the mundane, right? Unworthy maybe can be better translated as a super mundane, transcendental. Okay. I think so. Transcendent. <laughs> okay. Then he knows, I feel. So you see, of these six types of feeling, right, they can be divided into two categories. Huh? One is a mundane type, another one is the, is the super mundane. Huh? So, mundane type, you have the pleasant, unpleasant, and neutral. Super mundane, you also have the pleasant, unpleasant, and neutral. So, all together, you get six types of feeling. Okay, so we shall look at which one is, is important in our spiritual cultivation. And we need to cultivate one of these types of feeling for our spiritual growth. Okay, in order to attain the state of the smile of an arahant. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> um, okay, three feeling activating the latent tendency, right? So different feeling can stimulate uh, different emotion okay and you see uh, our emotion right arise from this uh, what do you call worthy uh, pleasurable feeling worthy unpleasurable feeling worthy uh, neutral feeling our our emotion we talk about emotion you are referring to the greed hatred and delusion okay 
and it's coming from. You can see that uh, the feeling is the, the root of the cause of our problem. Okay? So if you want to solve your problem, you have, we have to go to the root of it, right? We have to go to the feeling. Okay? So, so the, that's why, you know, the, the feeling, right? One of these mental factors uh, is very important, right? As the object of the second kind of the contemplation, right? In the foundation of the mindfulness. So that is precisely because feeling can trigger defilements and cause suffering. Okay? So, um, you see, in this Satipatthana Sutta, right, the Buddha says, if we are not mindful, right, if we have no any awareness, right, uh, this feeling, right, pleasant feeling, unpleasant feeling, and neutral feeling can trigger, uh, uh, what do you call, defilements, okay, or activate the unwholesome dhammas in our, uh, in our mind. Huh? For example, um, when this worldly, pleasurable feeling, okay, worthly, good feeling. If we are not mindful, right, if we are not aware, right, the unwholesome dhammas, right, this kind of latent tendency of greed will arise. Yeah? And then when this tendency of greed arise, you know, we have the tendency of clinging more and more because we have no, we, we, we don't have mindfulness, right? And then there again suffering arise, you see. So this is how, you know, the circle of suffering comes because of this because of the feeling okay so say for example right when um, similarly right you look at this unpleasant feeling right when this earthly unpleasurable feeling uh, arises we also become unhappy right so then of course if we are not happy right naturally we will respond with anger right? resentment and fear right so that kind of latent, the, the, the tendency, the latent tendencies uh, to hatred arises, okay? So similarly, when neither, uh, you know, uh, pleasant nor unpleasant feeling, that is to say the neutral feeling arises, right? Usually, we are not able to detect it, right? We can't detect it. Usually, it's very hard to detect it, right? Until we don't know you know, the existence of this kind of neutral feeling. So, you see, these types of unwholesome dhammas, right? Uh, that is the latent tendency of delusion will arise. Isn't it? You agree with it? Huh? Agree with it? Yes. Okay. So, all these problems, a great hatred and delusion come because of the, because of the feeling. Right? So we can, that's what the Buddha said, the feeling is a, is a root of our problem. It's a root of our problems. Okay? So, so that is to say, worthy, the good pleasant feeling, uh, what do you call, worthy pleasant feeling leads to greed. The worthy unpleasant feeling leads to anger. What else? Worthy neutral feeling leads to delusion. Okay? So this is how our greed hatred, delusion arises because of not knowing or not mindful or not aware of these three types of feeling. Okay? Now, after talking the pleasant, unpleasant, pleasant and unpleasant feeling, right, we look at the neutral feeling, right? Um, they said there are these two types of neutral feeling, right, in the suttas. It says, and the first one is not good, and the second one is a good one, right? So we have to develop this. And the first one is not good because that kind of neutral feeling is associated with ignoring. Okay? So in the case of uh, uh, ignoring, huh? uh, you see this Salayatana Vibhanga Suttas points out that the difference between neutral feeling right, associated with ignoring and those associated with wisdom is related to whether such feeling transcend their object, okay? The first one, so in the deluded case, neutral feeling is predominantly the result of the blunt fixture of the object, where the lack of effect on the observers results in the absence of pleasant 
or unpleasant feeling. Okay, so he said in the first types, okay, in the deluded case, right, in the case of ignorance, neutral feeling, right, are mainly due to the blunt features. You know, you know, you know, you know what is the meaning of blunt feature? We, we, we don't have any interest at all, you know, we look at that object, mm, it's a very kind of blunt feature, right? Then you, you know, there is a lack of effect on the one who observe it, right? So he becomes neutral feeling. Huh? So that kind of neutral feeling is definitely associated with ignorance, isn't it? Okay, you, you got it right. So this is definitely not a good one. But the second one uh, is, a, is, a, is, a, is a good neutral feeling. Uh, this kind of good neutral feeling associated with wisdom. Huh? And this wisdom, this feeling uh, related, uh, what do you call? related to the present of wisdom transcend the object since it results from detachment and equanimity and not from the pleasant or unpleasant features of the object. Okay? <clears throat> so anyway, that, to make short, right? This kind of neutral feeling, this kind of neutral feeling associated with wisdom that's come from the non-attachment, okay? Non-attachment to an object and then you experience a very peaceful mind. Okay, your mind becomes very peaceful because you don't have any attachment. So it's transcend the object. Okay? Yeah. So these are in fact in the sutta there are not many suttas eh, uh, giving um, explanation on these suttas. We we have to get here and there eh, to support eh, our teaching. All right. <clears throat> Okay, so two categories of feeling, right? One is the worthy feeling, and another one is the unworthy feeling. It makes sense to you or not? Unworthy. Unworthy. <laughs> okay, unworthy means not worthy. It means that it's a very transcendental feeling, a supramundane feeling. It's super, is, is that the word correct? Supramundane? Feeling called supramundane? Okay. <clears throat> Okay, so anyway, it is easy to understand the worldly feeling, right? Related to desire, for example, related to creed. For example, when the eyes see an object, right? And, and of course, here the object referred to probably colors, right? Uh, refer, probably referred to the shape okay, of an object or something that you can touch on, right? And such as, for example, your children or your wife, uh, you know, or sometimes the currency, the banknote. Uh, so you see the bank notes, okay? And then no, when you see this kind of uh, things, right? especially the 100 notes, uh, and then what, what color is that? Purple, huh? Purple, huh? Okay, uh, very fascinating, right? And you feel very happy. So what, what kind of feeling is this? <laughs> huh? Very worldly, a pleasant feeling, okay? That definitely give rise to greed, isn't it? Um, of course, this kind of worldly feeling will give rise to the unpleasurable feeling. Huh? For example, right, if you lost the money, right, if you if you experience the, the loss of your loved one, huh? uh, what else? Uh, you see, or the death, the death of the loved one. So, how is that feeling? Huh? Yeah, they, they, no, I mean, in the Buddhist terms, uh, yeah. worthy, unpleasurable feeling, right? Okay, <clears throat> yeah. So, <clears throat> yeah, it's very easy to understand, uh, this worthy feeling. Now we look at this transcendental feeling. Yeah, this one is more important because we need to develop these types of feeling, okay? Um, and then in the suttas, this kind of uh, unworthy feeling, right, include five types of feeling associated with nekamma, right? This renunciation is like getting, get, is, is, is detachment, okay? It's a detachment. And then there are these five types of detachment, okay? One is the ordination, and then the second one is the first jhana, nibbana, vipassana, and the, another one is the whole, all wholesome dhammas. Okay, now we look at this uh, papacha. I don't know, huh? 
Um, when you talk about the Babaja, many people are very scared of Babaja, right? You ask them to renounce, so they say, oh, I, love my hair, I love my hair, you see? <laughs> yeah, isn't it? I don't know, you see, uh, I, I like to use my example because, um, you know, I aspired to become a Buddhist monk when I was young time, right? When I was about 12 years old, I, I, I make a wish that I want to become a Buddhist monk. So I, I, I work very hard, right? And then I know that I have to fulfill all my duties as a, as a, as a, as a children, as a student. So I fulfill all these things. So at the age of 24, I rarely renounce, okay? So to make it short, huh? So when I renounce, huh? of course, before I renounce, I worked two years in one of the company. And then I worked very hard. All right, I had to show to my mother, I'm okay. I'm not what you, you, you think that, you know, I have to be a Buddhist monk, but uh, I'm, I'm, I'm a very normal person, okay? I show to my mother, I'm, I'm a noble person, you see? I have nothing, you know, what you thought, you know, because of the experience of uh, that kind of uh, trouble, right? Or uh, what do you call, gancing <laughs> uh, or whatever, then you become a monk. There's no such things like that. So I told them that my becoming a monk is because I aspire to become a monk, okay? So, you see, okay, then the day to come, you know, when I shave my hair, okay, when well, my mother cry, you know, cry and cry and cry. It's for how long my mother cried? My mother cried for almost six months. Every night, you know. Tiap tiap malam, cry, 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 cry. Them. I felt, I felt, but of course I don't feel sad because at least that is my dreams come true. You see, at least, you know, the, the wish that I make when I was 12 years old now comes true. So I was very, very happy. So I don't want to see my parents. I don't want to see my mother particularly. Huh? So I left and I went to Sri Lanka. Okay, because I don't want to see my parents. They cry. And they cannot, cannot stop me because I, I really make an effort. I want to become a Buddhist monk, you see. Of course, uh, uh, this kind of courage is not easy for an ordinary people. Yeah? But because I think, uh, you know, I, I come to this world something to, to fulfill at least. Like many of you, you know, come to this world, they want to get married, uh, lead a uh, marriage life, okay. Uh, uh, I don't know, when I was young time, uh, I wanted to be a Buddhist monk, right. And I, I want to do something for for the Buddhist asana. You see, uh, you know the kind of uh, aspirations that I have probably is because of my past life. You see, so yeah, when you talk about this ordination, uh, when you have the the thought of ordination or the the day you you renounce, you know, you really feel that happiness, and that kind of happiness can be described as the the unworthy, pleasurable feeling without any attachment. You're just simply happy, okay? Uh, full of energy and then, and then, you know, yeah, it, it's beyond descriptions, okay? Uh, so, and this, this kind of happiness is associated with renunciation, okay? Renunciation, of course, renounce is one thing, but the renunciation is to, you know, to stay away from all this attachment, huh? Yeah, so this is one thing. Um, and then another one, the, the, the first jhana, okay, the first jhana. You look at the first jhana, um, okay, now when you talk about this unpleasurable, uh, unworthy, pleasurable feeling, then you also have unworthy, unpleasurable feeling, isn't it? Uo. Uh, say for example, to some people, right, um, when they become monk after some time, they felt, you know, uh, uh, you know, they experience, uh, you know, many problems in their life, and then because of these problems, uh, they want to destroy, right? Okay, so that kind of experience could be considered as the unworthy, unpleasurable feeling, right? And of course, most of the time, you experience the what? A neutral feeling, okay? Uh, neutral feeling. Huh? Okay, so this one referred to this uh, 
uh, unworthy a spiritual feeling. This spiritual feeling I ate myself. Uh, spiritual, uh, you lead a spiritual life. Okay, now you look at the first jhana. Um, I, I, I think you know what is jhana means, okay? Jhana. Mm. You know jhana? Huh? You, the, the Chinese word chan, huh? chan is coming from the jhana. Zuo chan, zuo chan is coming from the jhana. The Sanskrit words mean the dhyana. Uh, the Pali word means the jhana. Zongwen jiao chan. Japanese called Zen. Okay? Uh, uh, Malay word called Diam Dudo. Du, uh, diam Diam Dudo. <laughs> you don't have better words. <laughs> so Diam Diam Dudo. <laughs> okay, now the second one is the, the first jhana. Alright, the first jhana is also considered a very good feeling that associated with the day karma, right? So because of this uh, first jhana, right, uh, that can produce a kind of escape from the sensual, uh, sensual plan of existence, okay? Uh, so, <clears throat> um, if we look at uh, <clears throat> the Buddhas, <clears throat> Uh, how these bodhisattvas, gautamas, attain the Buddhahood, right? We look at this because this one is very, very critical. We know that the bodhisattvas, uh, you know, the gautama, right? While he was about, uh, while he was young time, right? Uh, you know, he lived a very comfortable life, right? And then he says that at the age of 29, and he renounced the world, right? And then he spent how many years in the forest, practice asceticism? Uh, spent six years, okay, the, the Sutta says six years, and he, he, he experienced all kinds of ascetic practices, right, and then, and later on, right, he gave up all these ascetic practices, right, he thought, you know, through all these practices, my body becomes so weak, right, I can't obtain any happiness at all, right, uh, through all these practices, so, and the Sutta goes on to say, you know, he accepted the uh, what do you call the milk rice yeah? offered by uh, the sujata, right? And after taking the milk rice, right, he regained his uh, strength, right? And because of this, right, his earliest five attendants left him. Huh? And it says that, you know, this uh, prince uh, Siddhartha, right, the Bodhisattva, while well, he was thinking, uh, you know, how should I proceed yeah? in my spiritual path, right? He shouldn't just give up like that. So while he was uh, thinking, you know, a thought, right, suddenly came in, right? So this is the path to the enlightenment. So he was very sure that this is a path to the enlightenment. So how is that experience? So this is a quote. Uh, I quote from the suttas, okay? Uh, all right, it says that I recall that when my father, the Sakyan, was occupied, while I was sitting in the cool shades of the rose apple tree, Right? Secluded from the sensual pleasure, right? Secluded from the unwholesome states, I entered and dwelt in the first jhana. Okay, so you see the first jhana is mentioned, right? That was when he was young time, without any teacher's guidance, right? Just because he doesn't want to, you know, uh, involved in this plowing ceremony, so he himself stay away, right? And uh, you know, and sit under the body, sit under the rose apple tree and then meditate without any proper guidance, but he was able to enter into the first jhana, right? Okay, so because of this first jhana, he was very sure that you know, this is the path to the enlightenment. So I think this is a very strong message, you see. Uh, if not because of the Prince Siddhartha's experience of the first jhana, then he wouldn't be able to realize the, 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 the what do you call, the, the nibbana. Okay, so it's because of that experience. So you see, when you when you ask me, you know, as a Buddhist, whether we need to have this experience of the first jhanas or not, when you ask me, I say yes, it's very important because this kind of experience uh, will give you the strength, you know, to continue, you know, in your spiritual path, right? Without the experience of this, uh, what they call the concentration, right? Then we have problems. Huh? 
we will experience all kind of difficulties in life, then we will give up. But if you have this experience, they will give you strength and courage, no matter how, what difficulties you face. Okay? So, so this, this kind, when we talk about this kind, this path of enlightenment, right? Path of enlightenment come from the experience of the unworthy, pleasurable feeling. And what is that? It's the attainment of the first jhana. Okay? Uh, so this one is very important, right? And then another one. Okay? The third one is Nibbana. Okay, Nibbana. We Buddhists used to say experience of Nirvana. That, but does it mean that we have to wait until we die, we experience the Nirvana? Not necessary. Nirvana can be experienced in the here and now. Uh, I mean, being a lay people, right? a Pratujana like us, we also can experience the Nirvana. How to experience the Nirvana? You see, in, in the suttas, the Buddha says, as we um, experience okay, the concentration of mind, right? Okay, when you come out of the concentration, right? We can stay a little bit longer, you know, to experience, uh, you know, the experience of Nirvana. How is that experience? Okay, the experience of calmness, the experience of cessation, of defilements, the experience of the, what they call, the, the uh, viraga. Viraga means uh, this patient, okay? And the experience of letting go, you see? For sure, if you are a, a serious meditators, right? You should have this experience, okay? So this kind of experience we can consider as the experience of nirvana, okay? Uh, so that kind of experience uh, uh, will bring you, uh, you know, the, the experience of the cessation, the experience of the dissipation, the experience of the letting go. Okay, you understand what I'm saying? Uh, so uh, the, the importance of this experience is to make your mind inclined towards the nirvana. Okay, a uh, lot, lot of people say, okay, uh, you, you know in the northern tradition, in the Mahayana, uh, when you come to the Mahayana, they will ask you, okay, we have to train our mind, you know, to incline our mind to the pure land. Okay? Uh, we eat also pure land, we greet also pure land, you know, everything pure land, Amitofo, Amitofo. When you die, also pure land, of course. Right? So everything is about the pure land. So you incline your mind towards the, 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 the purification, right? Or reborn in the pure land, you see? So I call it as inclination of the mind. Right? So similarly for our Theravadas, right? our Theravada ultimate goal is to attain Nirvana. Right? So how is that experience huh? since you want to go to Nirvana? So this kind of experience of Nirvana can be experienced while you know, <clears throat> um, you are still alive. Okay? Don't wait until you die. Huh? For ex how to experience? So in many suttas, the Buddha says, uh, when you call up meditation, right, you will sure experience the the cessation, okay, niroda, the cessation of the the the, the defilements. Huh? You experience a very peaceful mind, a very subtle mind, a very sublime mind, a very peaceful mind. So all these minds can be included as the experience of cessation. Similarly, to the dispassion also, it means that you are away from the sensual pleasure, right. So these, these are the qualities of nirvana, okay? These are the nirvana, huh? And how the nirvana is experienced, right? As you abandon defilements, okay? So as we practice in our cultivation, right? You notice that, you know, our defilement is getting laser. Huh? The, less, the more the defilements you abandon, the more huh, we experience nirvanas, okay? Don't wait until that day to come. Right? <laughs> uh, you understand what I'm saying? What is nirvana? Nirvana, if you look at the word nirvana, is blow away, blow off. It means that blow away of the defilements. So you see, we have a lot of defilements, right? So as we practice the dhammas, right? Our greed, hatred, delusion is getting reduced, it's getting reduced, you see, by applying the right mindfulness, by applying the right awareness, right? And the greed becomes uh, lesser and lesser, and the anger becomes 
smaller and it's, it's getting reduced, right? As our greed, hatred, and delusion is getting reduced, right? Then the more nirvana is experienced. So this is very important. I mean for Theravada. But Mahayana, they, talk, they don't talk about the nirvana. They talk about pure land. Uh, so they said that if you recite pure land uh, before you die, uh, you will sure go to the pure land. So they give you a lot of courage, a lot of confidence. Right? Uh, when you eat, meeting each other, seeing each other, uh, the very first words come from your mouth, Omitofo, uh, like that. You see? Um, everything about Omitofo, Omitofo, like that. You see? So you see, so that word Omitofo, you see, has already planted in their mind. You see? Finally, in your mind, huh? they can't live without Omitofo. Similarly, we can't live without Nirvana. <laughs> because Nirvana is our goal. Huh? And Nirvana don't wait until we die, right? Nirvana can be experienced now, here and now. So the smile, the Arahat, is, is the experience of Nirvana. Okay? And then how about the Vipassana? Oh, Vipassana. Vipassana, we and past, huh? We, try, we can translate as seeing differently. Huh? Uh, ordinary seeing is pasana, okay? But as we practice uh, the Buddhist way, it's a vipassana. So the Buddha taught us to see differently. Huh? What is the difference? Pasana and vipassana. V means specifically, differently. Pasana means see in the upside down, okay? We see wrongly. Huh? The Buddha says everything is impermanent, but we see permanent. Right? The Buddha says everything is non-self, but we see self. So this is pasana. Right? So we were trained to see in a very different way. Right? The Buddha, the Buddha says um, uh, everything is impermanent. Yeah, we train to see impermanent. Okay? Though our mind seeing in upside down, but with the training of vipassana, we train to see huh? Vipassana. We try to see uh, in a very different way. Huh? So when the day to come, uh, what quantity of liao? Huh? Uh, when the day to come, you, you see the four noble truth, uh, look quantity of liao. Huh? Okay? So Vipassana means what quantity of liao? Quantity of liao? Quantity of impermanent. Wu chang ku wu wo. Uh, so this is Vipassana. This also in our training also, we train to see like this. Huh? I don't know whether you have any hermes or not. The bag called Hermes. Oh. You know the bag, the, the, the name of the bag called Hermes? I must. Uh, Korean, Chinese people will call, we, we call Hermes. I must. <laughs> you saw I must is very expensive, isn't it? One bag can easily cost you one million. Oh. You don't know, ah? Uh? Oh, how much bag you use? 20 ringgit one? <laughs> or plastic bag will do. <laughs> uh, okay, you see, the difference is this, you see, someone hold him, take the, the, the hermes uh, with them, uh, uh, carrying with them, you know, wow, you're the ego, right? Oh, you you come to you fame. Uh, 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 but how about if someone come and you know, snatch it away, uh, or, 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 or break it, or, or, or you see, then he feel very hurt, and then feel very sad, uh, and they want to scold at people, and then oh, all become mad like that. Huh? But as we practice with pasanas, okay, we still hold a, a hermes, one million, but when someone come and snatch it, or, or, or steal it, we feel okay, la. Uh, everything is of the nature, impermanent, I come and go, more so why? Okay, more. Okay, oh. <laughs> <Be tahan. laughs> the Buddha say ma, everything come and go ma. Oh, come on, I'm go to go to the side of 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 the you of the side of the side of the Huh? Huh? So that, that is a good training, you know, huh? So one who practice Vipassana, they can see things in a very different way and they can let go easily. Huh? Uh, so, uh, 
，然后呢，给人家抢了哈，不要紧哦，都是我过我过去世嘅业噶啦，冇所谓，唔见咗冇所谓哈。OK 冇，都唔得哦，都唔得吓，咁你哋系八散啦咯。<笑> so we had we had to learn with 八散啊哈。Mm-hmm. Then of course the last one is all wholesome dhammas. Huh? Wholesome dharma. What are these wholesome dhammas? You see, wholesome dhammas is opposed to the the what do you call mm. <coughs> the married. Okay, this wholesome here refers to the kushala. It's opposed to the pan punya. All right, punya means the meritorious. We do meritorious deeds. Okay. Uh, what what is the difference between these wholesome dhammas and the meritorious dhammas? Meritorious deeds. <coughs> Sorry, uh, the difference is this: huh? when you talk about the wholesome dharma, it will lead you out of samsara. Okay, so whatever things that you practice, okay, it will lead you out of samsara without uh, entangling yourself in the samsara. All right. For example, as you practice the vipassana, it will take you out of the samsara. Okay, like for example, if we are doing dhanas or coming coming here to do dhanas, okay, you make a wish, aspirations that by by performing the, the, these deeds, may I attain, huh, the ultimate realization of nibbana. So when you have that kind of thought arises in you, right? So that kind of deeds that you did was is called the wholesome dhamas. Okay, you understand? Uh, as opposed to the meditative deeds like punya. If you do something, uh, thinking to be reborn in the heaven, right? So this is a meditative state. Ah, when you do the dana, may I reborn in the heaven? Come, let's go to punya, lo. Oh, but if you are doing the wholesome dhammas, right? You want to lead all of samsara, okay? So that is called the wholesome dhamma. So you can see the difference as we as we practice, okay? Ah,、uh, with the thought of leading all of samsara. Then our life become very peaceful,、uh, without attachment, and that kind of experience is the unworldly, transcendental, ah,、uh, uh, pleasurable feeling. Okay, so these are the five things. <coughs> okay, now we look at、uh, another one. Huh? These, these are the few examples, the few stories now. Huh? Uh, the comparison made by the King Pasenadi between the followers of the Buddhas. And other ascetics. Okay, so these are the examples of、uh, monks experiencing the unworthy,、uh, pleasurable feeling. Right、uh, here, the story says、uh, from these Dharma Chetia Suttas.、Eh? One occasion, the King Pasenadi、um, met with the Buddhas. Right, he compared the Buddha's disciples and the disciples of the other heretics,、eh? other ascetic. And the king said, "Here、yeah, he says, yeah, here the quote." They said the Buddha's disciples、huh, are all very smiling and cheerful, sincerely joyful, and plainly delighting, living in at ease. Okay, so this is a the the very good comment by the King Pasenades, right? And the very whereas the King Pasenades said, you look at the other heretics, the other Shramanas and Brahmanas, right? They all looks very ugly, <laughs>、uh, you know, with、uh, blue. Veins appearing all over the body. I think people's eyes don't want to see them again. Jinja cham la ho. That's why you can see the difference between the Buddhist monks and other heretics. You see, if you go to India, you see other heretics.、Uh, they keep their long beard and then a、uh, mustache. You see, but for Buddhist monks, you see, we have to shave everything. Okay,、uh, so you can see a very obvious uh, difference. Uh, Between the Buddhist sankhas and others, huh? <clears throat>、uh, so therefore,、uh, we can say what the Buddha thought, right? Yeah, is about the path of purity. Okay, so what is that path of purity?、Uh, you can describe as the unworldly,、uh, spiritual, transcendental,、uh, spiritual, pleasant,、uh, pleasurable, that kind of lifestyle. <clears throat> okay, now we look at. A dharma pada, right? This dharma pada is from the verse seventy nine, and this is the stories. Uh, uh, there is a stories、uh, in this verse.、Uh, it's the story of the Mahakapina, right? Is is、uh, uh, he was a king, right? This Mahakapina, he was a king, and then、uh, one day 
right? He was um, working a lot in the park, right, together with uh, his ministers. And then he saw few merchants coming, uh, uh, you know, from the Salvatis, and they have a, have a short discussion with them. And then later on discuss, uh, discovered that, uh, you know, they were, uh, they met the Buddhas, right? And they have a discussion with those merchants. And then they were discussing about the Buddhas and the king was very happy after discussion with those merchants. And the king, uh, together with other ministers said, oh, we must go and see the Buddhas, right? And then we, they saw the Buddhas, right? And they pay homage to the Buddhas, right? And the Buddhas delivered uh, this course uh, to these groups of uh, the king and the, the, the ministers, right? Then this king, after listening to the Buddha's uh, sermon, and they got so much inspired, and then they, 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 they asked the Buddhas to, to ordain as a bhikkhu, right? So during the Buddha's time, the Buddha said, Ehi bhikkhu, Ehi bhikkhu. Then you become a Buddhist monk. Right? So this is how, you know, those days, uh, it's very easy without any procedure, right? The Buddha said, Ehi bhikkhu, then immediately you become a Buddhist monk. So this king, this king together with ministers, they will immediately attain the first stage of sainthood. Okay? And they were very happy. And their wife uh, was waiting at their palace. You know why? Not seeing their husband and not seeing their husbands. And they also went to see the Buddhas. Okay? Their wife. Huh? And uh, so, um, and then the Buddhas seeing the, their wife, the Buddha also uh, uh, delivered the sermon to those wives. And then those wives also attained the sainthood. Samyong, huh? And then the, their husband, after listening to this, the talk, and they become an arahat. Those days, uh, it's very easy to become the sainthood. Uh, by listening to the Buddha's speech, I think that is because the Buddha smiled a lot. <laughs> huh? Yeah, definitely. Huh? Because, <clears throat> okay, now we are, we are talking about the king, the wife, and the ministers, and their wife all become Buddhist. Oh, become monks and nuns. Alright, so that's good, isn't it? Then this king, uh, <clears throat> um, you know, at night, uh, meditate in the forest. You know, those days, uh, uh, they don't meditate in the, in the, in the big building. They, 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 they meditate under the tree, right, in the forest, uh, and the king, uh, you know, become a Buddhist monk, uh, become a, then they meditate under the tree, you know, and then uncontrollably, you see, in the middle of meditation, right, you say, Aho Sukam, Aho Sukam. What's the meaning, Aho Sukam? Aho Sukam means, I'm really too quiet. 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 Aho Sukam. Aho Sukam. I'm very happy. I'm happy. Exceedingly happy. Thai Kwai Le Le, Thai Kwai Le Le. So this is a type of experience, okay, by, um, uh, by meditators, right? So it says, the Buddha says in the Dhammapada, he who drinks the Dhamma, in the Dhammas, lives happily with a serene mind. The wise man always take delight in the, no in the Dhamma expounded by the noble one, okay? So Dhamma Piti, huh? the joys of the Dhamma, Sukang Seti, Vipassanena Chetasa Arya Pavedite Dhamme Sada Ramati Pandito. Okay? So, yeah, so this Aho Sukang, Aho Sukang. Oh, how to say? What happiness? Is it? What happiness? Is it Yeah, like what happiness? That kind of things. Aho Sukang, Aho Sukang. Aho Sukang. Okay? So, and of course, when this king, rather becoming a monk, say Aho Sukang, Aho Sukang. You see the bhikkhus hearing this monk saying, you know, this Aho Sukha several times a night. Then they went to see the Buddhas and the Buddha says, oh, you know. The <coughs> okay, so the Buddha's approach, right? The differentiation between worldly and unworldly types of pleasurable feeling. The Buddha's approach was not only his ability to discriminate between form of happiness and pleasure, which are to be pursued and those which are to be avoided, but also his skillful harnessing of non-sensual pleasure for the progress along the path of spiritual realization. Okay?
So you see, uh, Buddhism right, can be passed down right, to these days is because Buddhism right, teaches us how to live a happy life. Okay? Uh, so this kind of happiness right, is not pursued, uh, purchased by the money okay, or lead a very comfortable, uh, luxurious life, right? but to live with inner peace, right? with mindfulness and awareness. Okay, so <clears throat> okay, so the Buddhas did not say that all the pleasant feeling, right, um, should be avoided. A lot of people have a misunderstanding. They said as we pro as we practice the path, we should, you know, give up all kind of uh, pleasurable feeling. This is not true. Okay, there is one type of pleasurable feeling, that of unworthy or spiritual or transcendental feeling that should be pursued. Okay, so if you if you meditate, you had the experience of the Dharma joys. This is a very good experience. Stick to it, right, and then uh, progress uh, from day on. Okay, so this kind of pleasurable feeling is without any attachment, right? Um, so this is a this is a very wholesome, wholesome dharma. Huh? So the Buddha encouraged us huh, disciples, right, to to experience, uh, you know, this uh, first jhana, right, uh, and okay, then to pursue that first jhana, uh, <clears throat> because uh, this kind of unworthy pleasurable feeling, right, can lead us to the developments of the 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 concentration and the insight okay <clears throat> uh, so in the arana vibhanga suttas the buddha encouraged his disciples to find out what really constitutes true happiness and based on this understanding to pursue it in particular to the experience of the absorption huh? so this meditation the experience of jhana is very important because it yields a form of happiness that far surpasses its worldly counterpart alternatively and worldly pleasure can also arise in the context of insight meditation in the vipassana. Okay. Okay. So this is the last one. Okay. Uh, so how how is the practice with regards to the contemplation of feeling? Okay. So this one is found in the Majjhima Nikaya, right? The discourse to the Diganaka right contemplation of this feeling right so we contemplate this feeling uh, pleasant feeling neutral feeling or uh, the painful feeling are uh, impermanent condition dependent co reason liable to destruction liable to decay liable to fading away liable to stopping okay then because of this right he turns away from this feeling right he become dispassionate is liberated. So this is this is the types of training, okay? This is the types of training. So you see, um, um, so we say, we are the best people. We are the most happy people. Lots of people said, you know, my mother when when I become a mom, my mother felt very sorry. They said, uh, what happened? You grow old. Uh, you have no no wife to take care of you. You have no children to accompany you. You know. They said my mother, you know, when I was young time, at the age of like 16, 17, my mother kept asking me, Like is it fun? Like is it fun? I think my mother know I want to become a monk. <laughs> so, <laughs> so he would take every opportunity, you know, ask me, okay, like, in quite fun, girl. And even when I become monk, my mother also used to, to tell people that, uh, you know, uh,我而家唔擔心佢，但係佢老嘅時候我就擔心佢噶啦。你睇，媽都係咁噶，係咪？我見我轉出咗家啦，我媽都擔心我。擔心我老嘅時候冇人照顧。I don't know whether you understand or not, but this is what she said. Um, right? Um, so, so it's it's life is suffering. Ah, life is suffering. So then, then at the end, uh, before my mother passed away, uh, uh, she said 
to me 啊，佢講都係出家嘅仔咧，都係最孝順噶啦。Because I accompany her、啊、<coughs> Imagine that you know,、uh, you have so many children, right? If you fall sick, right? All your children will 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 leave you,、uh, and and leave you alone, right? And nobody come to to stay with you. Nobody come and look after you, right? So at the end of the day, you remain alone still, right? But Buddhist monk,、uh, we have plenty of time, and of course we have to fulfill our duties to show our filial piety to our parents, right? So we we I, I stay with my parents. I I accompany them. I live with them, right? I take care of them. Uh, or even I, I, I,、um, I told them, you know, to go for okay shopping, am I? 买啲嘢系咪？我都陪佢啊，拖住佢嘅手啊，系咪 ？So my mother at the end said, 都系呢个出家嘅仔最孝顺啊！哦，感到舒服咗。啊<笑><笑>，明白吗？明白吗？啊<咳>， yeah. So you see, anyway. Uh, I I try all my best、uh, to to convince my mothers uh, uh, that you have a、uh, the sons are、uh, to become a monks.、Uh, you are the happiest women in the world, sama,、uh, because the, the 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 opportunity don't come like this.、Um, because your son I、uh, can take care of you throughout your life.、Uh, so that's why I also make an aspiration. If anybody wants to become a Buddhist monk, right in the temple. Right, it's also our duty to take care of the monk's parents.、Uh, you understand what I'm saying? Like Brahma Vihara, right?、Uh, we have sankhas living there, right? But if they are sankhas' parents,、uh, if no one to take care of them in their old age, they can come to the temple and stay with us. Is it good? Good, no? Oh, 开心哦！那你想不想把孩子送来出家？ <laughs> 还是要给他去戒分，然后呢，就把你抛去这样子。<laughs> yeah, yeah. You see, you see, a lot of people still have a lot of confusion, a lot of misunderstandings about the Buddha, about Buddhism, right? Thinking, you know, said, oh, if monks、uh, become a Buddhist monk, then you know he has to, you know, leave all the、uh, the parents away, you know, not looking after the parents. This is not true. This is not true. Uh, so we still look after our parents. Our parents still can stay with us, and they can practice the dhammas together in the temple. So isn't it a blessing? Ah,、uh, ah.、Uh, so then, 以后知道了哈，孩子要出家，让他去吧。反正知道老了有人，他有照顾我啊，他会来照顾我。<laughs> okay, 好 <huh? coughs>。So anyway, so this is a very happy, um,、uh, happy path, right? When we talk about the spiritual path, it's all about the That the happy palm is about the the what they call、uh, it's very yeah it's a very happy palm is 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 this is the the part of purity ah、huh? it's not something that how pa how pa 这样子哈 it's very boring it's very dull it's very moody no no such things like that okay so that's why you find that you know the whole of spiritual path is about the path of ah、uh, the happy palm. Okay, so this is what we 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 look for, right?、Huh? The path of happiness, sad, 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 sad.